Well, soldier, you've had it pretty tough. How did you feel up there? I don't, I don't know. All mixed up in my, in my head. I just, just sort of lost control. You say you've never been like this before? Ne never before. Smoke? Bill Brown's anxiety reaction is fairly severe and is characterized by tremor and manifestations of panic. Take it easy. You're all right. You don't have to worry now. You're safe here. You get something to make you sleep tonight. Then tomorrow you'll go back to another hospital for a while and get a good rest. Kelly. Yes, sir. Bill Brown has had it tough, but with time and care, his basically sound personality will reassert itself. In a second case, the anxiety symptoms are milder. Tell me, soldier, what's your trouble? Well, sir, up on the line we got into pretty heavy shelling. A couple of my men were killed. Then another shell came in, broke my rifle. Picked me up and threw me off a ways. Yes. Go ahead. I, I guess I ran. Must have. I got 150 yards ahead of the company. Then what happened? When I came to, the uh, lieutenant was shaking me. I, I was crying. Don't remember much after that. How do you feel now? Uh, shaky inside now. What do you mean? I can't, can't exactly explain it. Feel it more inside than I, than I do outside. A kind of boiling feeling. How long have you been in combat? Nine months now, sir. Have you been wounded? Once. How did you feel after you were wounded? Before I was wounded, I, I wasn't jumpy. After that, I was very jumpy. Guess I haven't got it anymore. The way I used to. You've had a common experience. Nothing to worry about. Your nerves are on edge. You're frightened. We'll see that you get a chance to clean up, get some hot chow and rest. Here, I'll give you some reassurance is essential. The patient must understand that his case is not unusual and that it is nothing to be ashamed of. He's told that he will recover soon and completely. That's all. Thank you, sir. In the division area, the patient rests and relaxes under the supervision of experienced medical personnel. Here, sleep and plentiful regular meals exercise their beneficial effect. Relaxation and a return to normal social relationships promote a general sense of well-being. After a few days, the patient is interviewed again. Let's see. You've been here three days now. How do you feel? Pretty good. I've calmed down a little bit. Feel a little bit better. I had a fairly good sleep last night. Have any medicine to make you sleep? No, sir. Slept well without it? Yes, sir. How do you feel about going back to your unit again? Think you could do a job? Well, sir, I think I can. Good. You'll be ready for that in four or five days. I'm sending you to our retraining unit. We'll get some marches, and exercise, and work out with your equipment. Sound OK? Yes, sir. What you've had was like a safety valve, a way of letting off steam. Everybody has it. Anything else? No, sir. Those patients that show a speedy and definite improvement are moved to an adjacent area. Here they receive a short course of exercise and combat training. Then they're ready to rejoin their units in the field. 
about 40% of all combat neuropsychiatric casualties were returned to full duty after short-term treatment near the front lines. But what of the remaining patients who are more seriously sick? The further disposition of these cases is decided by the examining psychiatrist. What's your trouble? Go ahead, you can tell me. I'm sensing people getting killed. I can't hear you. Can't stand seeing people killed. Where did you see people killed? On the front. What happened up there? Men. Forward slope. Germans started shelling. We were trapped. Couldn't get out. Go on, what happened? I was lucky. I hit under the bridge. Started shelling again. I went crazy. Started running. How do you feel about that? Leaving your buddies? Should be in stockade. How do you feel right now? All right. Nothing wrong with me. What were you afraid of? Everything. What in particular? What in particular? Dead. Dead what? Dead people. I can't hear you. I can't stand seeing dead people. What does that do to you? Skips me. Well, dead people can't hurt you. But I've been telling myself for years. But I can't stand to look at it. Carpal, I'm going to send you back to another hospital where you can get some rest and treatment. In a couple of days, you'll begin feeling better. How does that sound to you? Anything but going back up there. Now look, you're going to be all right when you get back. In to addition the other to severe anxiety, the patient is deeply depressed. His speech and reactions are retarded, and he has a characteristic feeling of guilt. He will require more extensive observation and treatment in a psychiatric installation farther behind the fighting front. Often, a seasoned soldier reaches the breaking point after many months of duty. What happened? Well, I've been going quite a long time without any trouble. But now the shelling gets me. How long have you been in the Army? Thirty-four months. How much combat? I went through Africa, Baltuno, Anzio, up to there. Ever lose any combat time? No, sir. Mm -hmm. You've had about 320 days, then? Yes, sir. How long have you been a staff sergeant? I think about four months. Have you done a good job at it? Yes, sir. Until now. I'm no good now. What do you think's wrong with you now? Sir? I feel I've gone about as far as I can go. Feel I've taken about enough. Do you think you're sick? No, sir. But just no good anymore. Can't stand shelling. Last time up there, broke down. What do you mean, broke down? Didn't know which way to turn. Ever had this trouble before? No, sir. 
How do you feel about leaving your men? Well, I feel pretty bad about it. But I'm no good to them anymore. I can't leave them. I might get them killed or get them wounded. Just no good. <laughs>